I genuinely believe entrepreneurship is a talent. I do. And it is why I want people to, I think anybody can try to be an entrepreneur, just like anybody can try to be a hockey player or a basketball player or an actress. Mm -hmm. But I think right now in society, there's an expectation that you just become an entrepreneur, which is great, but that's like saying being a singer. I'm a singer, but do I make money being singing? Am I enjoying it? Is it my livelihood? And so I didn't think much, I just knew it came natural. And it was fun. For me, it was fun to work. You just enjoyed to sell I enjoyed things. it. I enjoyed work. It was not even selling, it was working. Like, I enjoyed snow would fall. Okay. You know, we had snow in New Jersey. Mm-hmm. And school would close, and everybody would want to go make snowman or sledding. Mm-hmm. And I'm trying to convince my friend, let's ring doorbells and shovel snow for money. Okay. Okay. It, it's, it was my passion. I, I love the process of putting in work. I know that's not for everybody. I know that's not what, you know, we don't read books of little kids who love to work, Mm -hmm. but I did. And so for me it came natural and it was fun and it was a place where I saw success. I didn't see success in the school, Mm -hmm. but you know, at a baseball card show, I had 35 year old, 40 year old men saying, wow, you're special, look how much money, you you know? Mm -hmm. So it was a place where I was getting positive reinforcement. I am shocked how much I don't care about money and now I'm starting to realize I never did. And a lot of, you know, I'm looking at Raisa mainly because she works for me for a long time, so David, like a lot of the reasons why I run an interesting company is I don't run it based on money. Now, you need money, for example, in our own company, VaynerMedia, as a matter of fact, just looking at them, I, you know, we brought in a good CFO, we've gotten more financially vigorous in the last two, three years, and that's great, that's allowed us to, that's healthy, that's important. Mm-hmm. You can't go out of business, mm-hmm. but, but uh, you, know, you know what money was even back then? It's a way to keep score for myself. Not to, you know, I don't, I don't use my money to make myself look good in front of other people. I, 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 it's something that's part of the game. Okay. Um, I don't mind money. It's not like I hate it. But it's not the driver for me. Winning like, comes in a lot of different ways. Let me tell you something. There's nothing that money has ever done for me that felt better than all those people at the stage when I stood five minutes longer and took those photos. Mm -hmm. I can't spend enough money to make myself feel like that. Admiration is much more fun than money. So it it is uh, more satisfying that you can sell something. Yes, the game, the game. game, You know, ding dong, hello? Would you like us to shovel your driveway? No, I'm okay, you sure? Okay, you know, that, not the five bucks. How old at the time you were starting? Six, seven, eight, very young. Really? Very young, very young. So once I saw that the audience was extremely young and unbelievably deep on Instagram, it gave me the context to know that a lot of people on Instagram are living a life to portray a certain lifestyle, which means that people are spending money they don't have. Um, Now I think taking on debt Mm -hmm. to build a business or you know upgrade your home where you can afford the mortgage, all great. Mm -hmm. But I think a lot of people are spending money on dumb shit, you know, (laughs) and um, and are buying cars and clothes and vacations that they can't afford to impress other people. And that was the point I was trying to make. Well, they say it's for the content. Yes, but I think that's an excuse a lot of times. Yeah. They're say, you know, I, when I, people say, but Gary, it's for the content. I hear, but Gary, it's for my insecurity. Okay. You know, I, you know, if it's for the content and you can show me that you're building a travel blog and you're making that money back, well, that's an investment. If it's costing you $17,000 to go to Bali, but you know, in the next three months or three, even three years, you're gonna get paid to subsidize that, that's fine. The reality is, I don't see that often. It was my mom that was really raising us. What she did, and she raised three children, I was the oldest so I got to watch, it wasn't that she gave me the mindset to be an entrepreneur, she didn't. My mom's not an entrepreneur, for example. It's that she watched what I liked and encouraged it. I think where parents make a huge mistake is parents attack. You're gonna be this. You're gonna be a doctor. You're gonna be a lawyer instead of setting back in the beginning and watching and saying, ooh, you should be a painter. You'd love to paint. Most parents attack my mom and I'm like this in business too. We're like, we're boxers who let the, it's like good martial arts. You let the other person's force, got it? So the way, what she did was she, 
She fostered it by not forcing me to be something I wasn't and giving me opportunities to be who I was. I'll give you a good example. My mom would punish me when I got bad grades. Okay. She would punish me. I would, I would get punished. But if there was a big baseball card show, even if I was punished, she'd let me go. No TV, no playing with friends, but a big baseball card show, she'd let me go because she knew that's where I was building my future. The way I think about finances is pretty interesting. I, I don't think about it from a, what, you know, one, my whole life I've been able to make money. So, you know, and I understand that that's a rare talent, I do. Like, most people aren't super gifted in making money. So I'm, I don't fear finances the way many do. Um, at the same token, I don't put it on a, for that reason probably, I don't love it either. So when I think about five or 10 years from now, it feels similar to now, which is I want to keep making money so I can keep reinvesting it and, and, and keep giving myself opportunities to play. Um, I'm not, you know, I save money for a rainy day, but you don't need that much. Yeah. Well, let, let me rephrase, it's percentage by, I don't need that much by percentage of what I make because I'm not looking to live too big of a lifestyle. So I put some away, but for the most part, I use money to give myself opportunities to play business. It's like a game. When you speak about what you know, okay. you don't need to do research. If everybody here, if I asked you to now talk about your life for 30 minutes, your life, or what you did yesterday, it's not very hard. The biggest reason people struggle with content is they talk about things they don't know. Okay. Okay. They may know about something in theory, but they don't know the details, and so they have to do research for the details. I live in details and then speak about them. You just did it. Yeah. At the time, you, you don't even think that, I, oh, this, this thing, I can monetize this. No. Okay. I, I always know that if you do the right thing, long term, there'll be opportunity. And I knew if I made a show on YouTube that people watched, that that would be good. That we would sell wine, that things would happen. So I don't worry about monetization in the short term. Okay. I, I, I just, this is, and if you notice, I talked about it a little bit on stage in a different way. People want money to buy things. It's their biggest problem. Then you have to worry about monetization. If you think about things long term and you don't spend a lot, I mean, I, I lived in a $2,000 a month which is a lot of money, but not a lot of money in New Jersey and New York. Like I lived in a very humble apartment when I was building Wine Library. I didn't need the money. I, you know, I didn't need the money. I lived humbly. I didn't spend more than I had. And so I didn't have to worry about Wine Library TV making me money. I don't want a boat. I don't want a fancy car. I don't want jewelry or art. But, but I don't judge other people. If, they, if you can afford it, do whatever the hell you want give it all away to charity, buy a $5 million painting. If you can afford, especially if you made it, if you made the money and you can afford it, you're my favorite person. Because then you can do whatever the hell you want with your money. I think, and by the way, if you inherit it, you inherited it. You know, so you were in a fortune situation. Obviously I don't look at that the same way because I admire people who make it. But no, I do not. I'm unbelievably unimpressed with somebody who flaunts their money with things, I don't judge it, but it doesn't get me excited at, I mean, at all. I've never looked at anything and been impressed by it for its cost. I don't even know what things cost. Yeah. I don't, you know, like, you know when I go to like, if I'm in, you know, I think a lot about when I'm in Cannes for the marketing festival or if I'm in Beverly Hills for an event or, I remember I was somewhere, it was like very fancy cars I don't know what is, what's a $500,000 car, what's a $5 car, like it just, jewelry, forget about it, I have no idea, art, no clue. It's just not on my radar. No, I don't, I don't, I don't think about that at all. If they love what they're doing, the adversity is just part of the process. I'll be very honest with you, I, I said it recently in London, I like it. I like negative. I like it. I like adversity. Mainly because I don't fear it and it's part of the equation and more importantly, there's nothing that happens in business that is even remotely close to the health of my family. Right? 
So I have perspective. Money is not something I'm willing to cry over. Okay. Last advice for us, the young generation, the middle class. Um, I think there's a couple things to really think about. I think that self-awareness and patience really matter. I think not caring about other people's opinions really matters. I think if you think about those three things, it gives you a chance to be happy. You know, but I think everybody's impatient because they want to prove it to other people, their parents, their friends. I, I just think we're living lives for other people. We have to stop. So live your life for you. That's my advice. Live your life for you. The, the biggest key is, my friends, is one, not worrying about other people's opinions because if you worry about other people's opinions, you're gonna quit. Number two, the biggest mistake millennials, not only in Indonesia but in the world, make is they're just not patient. You know, it takes 10 years, 15 years to build something meaningful for 99% of people. Everybody, you know, because you live in a world where you have instant gratification, people got confused and think for the same way that they can watch any show they want or pull up anything they want on the phone or Google search something that they can build a million dollar business that fast too. So patience and, and really focusing on your internal skills and then most of all, just understanding that the level of hard work that it takes to actually build something meaningful is enormous. It's just hard. It's hard. It's hard and it's gonna take a very long time. Do you still wanna do it?